Hi everyone, it's Tuesday. It is December 17th, 2019, and I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. I have a couple of devotionals for you today. But first, as always, I like to say the Our Father, so please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father. Okay, this is called A Load Too Heavy. And the reading is from Ephesians 4, verse 31, and it says, Do not be bitter or angry or mad. Never shout angrily or say things to hurt other people. Oh, the gradual grasp of hatred. Its damage begins like a crack in my windshield. Thanks to a speeding truck on a gravel road, my window was chipped. With time, the nick became a crack, and the crack became a winding tributary. I couldn't drive my car without thinking of the jerk who drove too fast. Though I've never seen him, I could describe him. He is some deadbeat bum who cheats on his wife, drives with a six-pack on the seat, and keeps the television so loud that the neighbors can't sleep. Ever heard the expression, blind rage? Let me be very, very clear about blind rage. Hatred will sour your outlook and break your back. The load of bitterness is simply too heavy, way, way too heavy. Your knees will buckle, buckle under the strain and your heart will break beneath the weight. The mountain before you is steep enough without the heaviness of hatred piled onto your back. The wisest choice and the only choice is for you to drop the anger. You will never be called upon to give anyone more grace than God has already given you. Praise Jesus, hallelujah, all glory to God, thank you, Holy Spirit. And this one is called, Imagine Seeing God. And the reading is from Psalm 134, verse 3. And it says, May the Lord bless you from Mount Zion, he who made heaven and earth. The Hebrew writer gives us a national geographic piece on heaven. Listen to how he describes the mountaintops of Zion. He says, when we reach the mountain, we will have come to, quote, the city of the living God, to thousands of angels gathered together with joy, to the meeting of God's firstborn children, whose names were written in heaven, unquote. You could read that in Hebrews 12, 22 and 23. What a mountain! Won't it be great to see the angels? To finally know what they look like and who they are? Imagine the meeting of the firstborn, a gathering of all God's children. No jealousy, no competition, no division. We will be perfect and we will be sinless. And imagine seeing God finally, to gaze in the face of your father, to feel the father's gaze upon you, neither will ever, ever cease. Oh, glory to God. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at what we have to look forward to, people. Look at the magnificent God we have, our Heavenly Father has sent the Holy Spirit to dwell inside us and to, to lead us into all truth. 
and and to bestow the fruit the nature the very very nature of the holy spirit to bestow its characteristic traits on us if we follow in its path look at how much jesus gives us the abundance of his spirit while we're here waiting for that glorious appearance of our savior to take us home people if you don't know that you need a savior and you're still walking in the flesh if you're still giving credibility to your flesh and the addictions that straddle you and weigh you down and the hatred that that um you carry like was in the first uh devotional that i spoke about and all the bitterness and the disgruntledness and the loneliness and the uh misfortune and the misunderstood people and all the critical things that happen to us here on the earth we have something to look forward to people it's not just what we're living under here there's much much more than this we were born into this hell planet but the good news is that jesus died for us and shed that blood so that when we're called we can be redeemed from our sins that blood will cover us and cleanse us from our sins but the only way that can happen is that we need to repent and come to jesus with sorrow that we spent all the days of our life following the impulses of this world which the author is satan but the lord when you come to the lord and you surrender to him and you repent of your sins and you trust that jesus now will save you and give you everlasting life he's he will send his holy spirit to dwell in your temple see your body is the temple made without hands you know it's not a building it's not a church we are the church and the holy spirit will come and dwell inside of you and teach you all things and comfort you and love you and raise you properly without all the baggage that we carry around from the things that were done to us when we were children we come to god as little children that's the reason we have to come as little children with trust and humility and we give ourselves over to christ the way we were giving ourselves to satan we just switch switch teams you know you come you repent you admit that you went the wrong way you give it over to god he forgives you and now you're following jesus instead of the powers of this world and only coming as a child means you you come without pride you drop your pride you trust because children trust their parents and it's blind faith not blind rage blind faith okay and the only thing i ask you to do because i'm going to post the salvation video now right after this one ends you just come and follow along on the video repeat the words on the screen and just mean it from your heart okay no one can go to heaven no one can see jesus no one can have everlasting life and see the people that uh were following jesus before uh uh in your family or your friends and family who have gone before you who believed in christ you won't see any of it unless you come because that's the only way to get to the father all right you just have to be sincere lip service doesn't make it it's not like you can just say say it from a concept or just because you're afraid and you want to you want to play it safe now nah, that doesn't fly god knows what's in here and um 
if you're not broken over this, it can't be fixed and be remade. It has to be broken. Okay? Because the Holy Spirit will come and remake you into the image of Jesus. That means you'll shed all that blind rage and that anger. And you won't want to sin anymore, even though occasionally we're going to fall, but you won't want to do it. And when you do fall, the Holy Spirit will be there to pick you up. They'll convict you. You'll feel sorry. You'll have remorse and you pick up right where you left off and you continue following Jesus. That's the way it is. Okay. I always, always, I want to remind you that I love you and Jesus loves you. Never forget how much Jesus loves you. He loves you so very, very much. And he's coming real, real soon, people. I can't tell you how close we are, you know, but our, what feels like an eternity for us is because we, we have time on earth, but there's no time in heaven. So it's like a breath to the Lord, but for us, it feels like forever. Okay. But believe me, it isn't. Just see how, how old are you now? If you're in your 50s or your 60s and it just seemed like yesterday that you were a kid, you know, riding your bike. That's how quick time flies. And before you know it, we'll be home. But you need to do this first in order to get home. Okay? I want to bless you in Jesus' holy, holy name. Okay? Follow along. Shalom. Shalom.